During a winter such as this, ice, snow and floods have kept fishermen at bay sometimes for weeks on end. And you would think that after such a dearth of fishing, when at last he did get a bite, it would bring a, a glow of joy and gratitude to every fisherman's heart. It's not necessarily so. Towards the end of last week, there seemed to be a promise of better weather for grayling fishing. So, I took down a rod for the first time this year and went to a grayling river with a good supply of cockspurs and brandlings. Several other people had made the same mistake, and there was a decided melancholy in the evenings at the inn. On Saturday, the last of the other fishermen departed. He had caught, in three days' fishing, one sizable fish. But on the last day, he said, he had hold of something big which had broken away from him. He thought it might have been a chub. Until that departing fisherman said this, I had forgotten that there were chub in the river. Got a fish. No, I haven't. It is not a regular chub river like the wire, and no one visits it with the special object of fishing for chub. Chub, in fact, in the north, do not get the attention they deserve. One would think that in winter, the trout fishers would spend a little time in fishing for chub, just as in other rivers they fish in winter for grayling and pike. But the disappointed grayling fisher spoke of that chub with contempt instead of gratitude, though the chub had given the only moment of interest to a melancholy day. Trout, I think. I felt that he was a little ungrateful to that chub and thought how odd it was that in different parts of the country the same fish should be so differently esteemed. I think you're a trout. Yeah, I'm fishing. Summer, don't you? Go on. Get bigger. Go. Cool. 